not all gap years look the same. And today I speak with the amazing Abby Taylor all about her agriculture gap year. Um, and it's not just for people who are interested in farming, but those interested on taking a COVID gap year and those interested in learning how to set out a really intentional plan and how to go with the flow and how to get what you want out of your gap year. Abby's got so many great things to share. So take a listen. real people sharing their stories, ideas, and experts diving deep into how you can make the right decisions in order to have a meaningful gap year. This is the place to be no matter where you are on your gap year journey. I'm Michelle Dittmer, your resident gap year expert. Let's jump right in. And welcome to the Gap Year Podcast. My name is Michelle Dittmer and I am your host and Gap Year expert. I am thrilled today to have the one and only a, uh, Abby Taylor with me today. She has such an incredible story and she reached out for one of our free 30-minute consultations uh, many, many months ago and I've been following her gap year with such interest and I'm so excited for her to share her story. So Abby, thanks for joining me on the podcast today. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to chat with you, Michelle. Yeah, and I know you're a longtime podcast listener. Uh, you told me in our in our little chat um, that there were some other uh, little creatures that might have also recognized my voice. Uh, what were you doing at the time of listening to the podcast? <laughs> Moving cows. <laughs> 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 well, I think that's a, a, a great introduction to maybe telling our listeners a little bit more about who Abby is. Well, um, I, whenever I introduce myself, like usually the first thing I say is I'm a farmer. I grew up on a farm and I do spend a lot of time with chickens and cows and sheep and whatever other animals I can find. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely farming is a big part of who I am, but I'm also, I'm pretty active. I like biking and hiking and I'm a piano player and uh, that's me. <laughs> I love it. And I think it's so fun to, to hear your story because some people have this preconceived idea of what a gap year is all about. And I think there's a couple things about your story that really stand out for me. Um, so let's go, let's rewind to before your gap year. You already had some education under your belt. So I was wondering if you could talk us through kind of, you, you graduated high school and then what happened? Yes. Um, so I finished high school and I stayed for a fifth year because my high school had this really cool program. It was called the Environmental Leadership Program. And it was like one semester all day every day with this same class of 30 people and we were just outside every day we did like we got our canoe certification our chainsaw certification we went hiking and, and kayaking and biking like it was fantastic and it was about leadership so i learned a lot doing that program so um i didn't go to school right after high school and um and from there i went into a college program so I studied agriculture. I did a diploma in agriculture at Ridgetown campus. And I absolutely loved that program, like had such a good time there. And I really learned a lot and um, was the right call for me. Um, I, when I when I left high school, like I kind of turned a lot of heads by going to that school because I was like, I was very academic and like multiple people were kind of like, you're going to go to college. Like, are you sure? But, but um, I really loved that program, and so the, after those two years at Ridgetown, I did decide to go to university after that, so I transferred from, Ridgetown has, is affiliated with the University of Guelph, so then I transferred over to study agriculture economics at Guelph, and I did that for one year, so that was like last school year, and um, met good people there. I did did well in my courses, but it was not I was not passionate about it. It didn't really feel like I was um, 
achieving any of my overall goals, even though I was doing well at it. So that was what happened. And then it was this summer that I decided I didn't want to go back to that program. I think a couple of things that I really want to unpack a little bit here is that that feeling of being judged for choosing a college program over a university program. Cause I think a lot of young people really struggle with this because society kind of tells us like you're an 80s student or a 90s student, you're, you're, you're smart. Therefore you should be going to university. And that's not always the case. Um, did you feel some of that pressure and some of that pushback? Yeah, yeah, I kind of had a hard time with it. Like, once I got there and I knew that I loved the program, then I was, like, could totally defend my decision. But at the time, people were like, you're going to be a doctor. Why are you going to this small, like, rural school that anyone can get into, they say. But, like, it was, I knew that what I wanted to learn and what I wanted to be, which is a farmer, I was looking at the courses and, um, like, a university agriculture program just wouldn't be as useful to me on the farm as the things that I could take at this college. And, and it was more than that too. Like when I, when I went to that college, like I was like, this is a place where, where I will know everyone and people will know me. And that was what I got out of it. And then when I went to university, I found that like, it wasn't the same experience and that was really important to me. So, but I did have a hard time like getting away from caring that everyone was thinking, Oh, like Abby's, kind of going down by going to this school, which is not at all the case. Yeah. And I'm so impressed by you knowing what your goals were and being able to be bold enough to make that decision and to uh, stand up for where you, where you thought and where you knew you should be, because that takes a lot of guts, um, especially as a young person where, where people perhaps of authority or people with more life experience might be steering you in a different direction. So knowing yourself and knowing your goals is so important so that you can make the best decisions for yourself. So kudos to you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I think that that boldness and that confidence continued for you because after your first year where you again excelled, you found that it, it just wasn't moving you any closer to your own personal goals for yourself. So you decided to kind of do, take a little bit of a detour and step away from that program. So what did, what was that experience like? That was, that was scary <laughs> to not go back. Um, cause again, yeah, a lot of people were like, but you're doing good. At, like, why would you quit something that you're doing well at? But, um, I love learning and I just like using my time to learn valuably and not, I just I didn't like what I was learning. So, um, it was difficult and thankfully, like I found some support in the gap year podcast, honestly, cause I was like, this is kind of crazy that I'm not going to go back to this. Um, but I think it was, it was a good decision. I kind of let people back in my head. Well, partly I went to university because I was thinking, okay, these business skills are going to be really useful on the farm, which is, which is true. But the particular business skills we were learning weren't. <laughs> um, so, it, but I was also kind of succumbing to people being like, okay, you're done college. Like now you should transfer to university. <laughs> and, but then I did that and I was like, okay, I've done this. Um, this definitely wasn't the right program, but it's not helping me. So I'm um, glad that I chose something else. Yeah. And you, and you tested something, right? So much of our early career and our early education and, and becoming an, an adult is that testing of things and, and getting out there because we don't know what our future holds. And to some extent, we don't know what direction we should be heading in. And how can you know? You, you've never experienced anything. You, you've taken your chemistry class, you've taken your math class, you've taken your, your social studies class, and then you're supposed to know what you want to do with your life? No way. Exactly. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that you got out there and, and you tested it. And when you found it wasn't the right thing for you, you adjusted your course. And I just can't encourage people enough. When you make these life decisions, nothing is finite. Nothing is setting you on a singular path to, I don't know, a job or to happiness or to wealth and fortune. You're going to have to make so many decisions along your journey at every step along the way. 
a lot of them are going to be easy decisions and some of them are going to be hard decisions, but you're going to have to adjust your course until you find the right path that you're, that you want to be on. And that will continue to evolve over the course of the rest of your life. So I think that your example and, and, and the way that you've navigated your life so far is a great lesson for people to have the confidence to know that, that, getting out there and testing is what you're supposed to be doing at this stage in your life. And that kind of led you into a gap year where you got to test a whole bunch of different things. So, so you decided you weren't going back to school and then what did you do with that information? <laughs> um, well, I decided that while I was already, I guess my, my journey kind of started before I knew that it was going to be a gap year. <laughs> um, so uh in the summer i had i had a job lined up that was supposed to be around home and it was gonna be a cool job but it just we postponed it because of covid it wasn't gonna be very good and then once i had that kind of chance i knew that i wanted i, I could have worked at home on the farm the whole summer but i really wanted to try something different and i found a job in quebec so i'm from ontario so it's like a seven hour drive away and uh, it was an eight-week position, and so at the time, that was going to allow me to go back to school in September, um, and I was like, cool, I'm going to try this. It was something I'd always wanted to do is, like, I'm from a, a grain farm, pretty large-scale farm, and uh, had always wanted to work on, like, a, a just a different farm model, so this is, like, a small direct sale, like, selling directly to consumers' livestock farm. And um, it was while I was working this job that I really realized this is great. I want to work on more farms. Um, I know I don't want to do online school because as the summer progressed, I realized that I was looking into all kinds of other programs to do. But then I was like, that's just not the kind of learning I want to do this year. And um, so then it became, well, we had our 30 minute chat <laughs> and then <laughs> I was thinking like, I'd really like to see more farms across Canada and that became a plan of like where I could go and keep working different jobs. I think that is such a neat thing that uh, you found opportunity when something else fell through, that you didn't just sit at home and say, oh, what was me? I'm just going to take the easy path. I'll just work that regular job on my farm that I'm used to doing because that's the easy thing. Um, we're in a global pandemic and you still were able to challenge yourself and to follow a curiosity of yours um, and expand your knowledge. Again, testing out something else that might be of interest to you and acquiring a whole new set of skills um, because each type of farming requires that you know how to do different things and, and not just the, the physical labor of that style of farming, but also the business model and the land requirements and the relationships you need to form. So um, you were definitely pushing yourself and growing and developing and becoming a stronger all-round farmer by, by getting out there and doing that. And and moving seven hours away from home. Um, what was that like? Yeah, that was interesting. It went really well. I didn't know how it was going to go because it's, I've been in post-secondary for three years and yet I had never been away from home for more than about two weeks because both of them were within an hour and a half away from me and like my parents need me. Well, they, they, they like my help on the farm. So I would come home every weekend and help. So, uh, I was like, I don't really know how I'm going to handle <laughs> this move. Like it could go good. It could go bad. But once I got there, Quebec was a really good choice because the farm, the people I was working for, were, they were lovely. I learned a lot from them. And uh, the farm was, it was just like, it was perfect. So it was a really good starting point. So I didn't have issues moving away. Um, and it was definitely, definitely good that I, that I did that because just getting away from your own farm and seeing what other people are doing and kind of gave me the chance to, to see that, like, I love working on our farm at home because I love helping my parents out, but I've, like, grain crops aren't my personal passion, and I've kind of been thinking, like, that I'd be okay with it in the future, but in reality, like, I really wanted to do my own thing, which is livestock and work with our farm, but it's easier to see that when you're away and you have your own time to think about that. 
Yeah. And I think sometimes we get caught up in, um, I don't want to say, in, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but parental expectations as a whole, um, that we we know what our parents do for a living and we know that they have some sort of desire for us. And those those opinions matter to us and we really internalize them, whether we know it or not. And we want to make our parents proud and we want to live up to their expectations. Um, and especially if there's a family business of some kind, uh, there's often some sort of assumption or conversation around uh, taking over that business or, or following in somebody else's footsteps. Um, and so making space to get away from that, to get away from the routine, to get away from the, uh, the normalcy and get out of your comfort zone and allow for some silence um, can often make a lot of space for that reflection and for being able to actually look back at that normal objectively instead of just living it day by day. It's almost like you're looking through a window back at your life and saying, okay, well, what, what was feeling good about that? What was not feeling good about that? Um, and you can, you can get a, a different perspective on your own life when you step away from it for an extended period of time. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So, um, so then from Quebec, uh, Quebec, where did you head after that? Um, so I was in Quebec two months and that was September. I wrapped up there. So, um, wh while I was in Quebec, uh, that was when I was listening to this podcast, I decided I was not going to go back to school, but then I was like, okay, now I have to figure out what I'm going to do. And, um, I was reading this book called uh, dirt to soil. It's a really good book. And it's, it's written by a guy in the States who I really wanted to go to his farm, but like, obviously that wasn't going to happen this year, but he mentioned some farms in Canada as well that I was really interested in the things they were doing. So I emailed this farm in Saskatchewan, um, and basically just sent them my resume and said that I read about them and did they want to hire me? <laughs> and I was thinking more for next spring, but, uh, they got right back to me and they said, like, they, like, how quick can you get here? Because <laughs> they had people lined up that um, were supposed to come work for them that couldn't come because of COVID. So it was kind of the perfect situation. So um, from Quebec, I drove out to Saskatchewan uh, with my mom, which was a really fun little trip for us. And I worked in Minton, Saskatchewan. So that's um, almost on the border with the U.S., southern Saskatchewan, and uh, that was that was quite an experience. So I worked in Saskatchewan for about a month. So there was no job posting. There was no family relation. There was no connection to this farm other than you read about it in a book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so, so I'm just picturing this family all of a sudden just opening up their email and there was this email um, from somebody being like, hey, can I come work for you? And for them, it was probably like completely out of the blue, unexpected, but also so necessary. And you created an opportunity for yourself. Um, sometimes I don't know if you're in the sphere of manifestation where we sometimes hear like, put it out into the universe and it will happen. Um, and I don't particularly subscribe to like putting it out into the universe, but I subscribe to send the email, make the ask, find your own opportunities. And you did exactly that. You just, you just asked and, and, and you were able to create something. And I think that is just so magical. And, and was this a, a one-off experience or have you, have you felt that generosity and that openness in other ways? Uh, no, this happened like again and again for me. Um, yeah, that it was just a perfect situation. Like the farm couldn't believe it either. When I got there, we kind of laughed about it because they're like, yeah, we, these people said they couldn't come. And then just like not too long later, like your email just turned up and it was perfect. <laughs> and as I kept going with my gap year, like I traveled more, I, I went all the way west to BC and I toured a lot of farms along the way. And all of them, like I didn't know really many of them. I would just email people and and like I had to be careful with COVID so I'd have to be like well I'll wear a mask or if you don't want to come it's it's totally fine and but people always were like no one turned me down 
and um, I got another job later on that was kind of through the same sort of thing. I did a farm tour and and that person hooked me up with another job. So it, <laughs> it's worked out really well for me to not look for job postings, to just find a place I want to work and be like, okay, here I am. <laughs> you want to hire me? I think that is so powerful um, that you sometimes we think there's one way to do something. And uh, so for a lot of people in, in finding a career, it's like, okay, well, go on Indeed and find a job posting. And 99.9% .9 of them I'm not qualified to do, so I'm not going to apply. But the reality of the way that the world works is that um, so much of what indicates if somebody's going to, to be a good employee is their initiative. And if you can learn how to approach them respectfully and you're curious, so asking for a farm tour, um, instead of saying, can I get a job? Will you pay me? You're saying, I'm curious about the work that you do and I have all of this other experience and I want to learn about your craft and what you do so well and how you do it and can you show me around is a really great way to open that door and to, to, to demonstrate that curiosity and to demonstrate that initiative without having to write those words on a resume. Um, and then it can translate into beautiful things. And it's very similar to um, an informational interview that you might set up with somebody in a different field. So, so maybe you're not into farming in the same way that Abby is, but maybe you're into accounting and setting up an informational interview with an accountant to learn about what does their day-to-day -day look like? What, do, what does it look like um, to be in their office and understand how their, the structure within their workplace is set up um, can often lead to job opportunities in the same way. So I love that you had the the foresight to be curious and to get out there and it translated into something because of the way that you approached it um, which I, I would just encourage other people to do and just get out there and just ask the worst thing that somebody can say is no and then you're in exactly the same spot that you were before so just getting out there and ask people are so generous with their time especially when it's something that they're very passionate about they want to share that with the world um, so get out there and ask that would be yeah. my that was kind of like the motto of a lot of my journey is just jump fast and usually it will work out pretty well. Yeah, I think it's it's so uh, such an underrated skill. We're often too scared of that no. We're scared of looking silly. We're scared of being out of our league. Who am I um, to to be asking for that? Who am I to to find out those things? Who am I to ask for this? Um, when when in fact people just love to love to share what they know and love to inspire other people to be equally passionate about what they're so passionate about, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and, and sometimes we're maybe afraid of yes, too, honestly. <laughs> like, um, there is, um, later on when I was in BC, and um, I wanted to try out, there's this thing called WOOFing, it's an acronym for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms, and I'd never done it before, but it's kind of like a, it's a trade where you can if you, people that are traveling will do this where you can you work four hours say for a farm and then in exchange you get room and board so then you can do whatever you want the rest of the day and um i have found this farm in bc that would they were doing that and they had an abattoir on site and i had always wanted to see the process of that and like rarely would you get the opportunity to do that sort of thing and um so I was going to reach out to them and I was kind of like, do I really want to do this? Like I, if I email them, like this would probably work out, but I was just like, just do it. <laughs> It'll be good in the long run. And I'm glad that I did because I did spend several days there and really learned a lot. I thank you for sharing that perspective. Cause I, I sometimes forget that being scared of the yes, um, <laughs> because you're putting yourself out there and that's going to be a risk. And if they say, yes, I'm kind of going to have to do it. Um, and, and that goes for the decision to take a gap year 
Um, that goes for all of the steps along your life journey too, um, is, is that somebody is going to say yes. And that means you're moving forward and that is out of your comfort zone. And, but that's a good thing because that's where you are going to grow and learn, like you said. So yeah. I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what are some of the biggest learnings or the biggest takeaways from your gap year that you experienced um, that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, um, I feel like there's two sides of things. Like I, I learned a lot of, I learned a lot about specifically regenerative agriculture. Like I really learned a lot of actual knowledge that, um, and opened me up to this whole world of uh, regenerative agriculture that I'm really passionate about now. And then there was more like conceptual <laughs> things, I guess, of like you know, realizing, like after I worked in Saskatchewan, that was another grain farm. So it was like similar to at home, but but also very different. But I realized like when I was working for somebody else for all that time, I was like, you know, like someday uh, I'm not really doing this for me. Like if I keep, if I work only on our family's grain farm, like that's, that's because I love my parents and want to help them out, but it's not like my personal passion. And I could see that when I was working for somebody else. So that was kind of like, yeah, I really need to pursue my livestock interests because that's what I really want to do. So definitely there was things like that. Um, I also, I got really inspired by a lot of women in agriculture that I met along the way because um, certain areas of agriculture are still very male dominated. And when I worked in Quebec, I was working for a woman named Erin and it was like, it was her farm and she made all the decisions. And I just loved that. It was, I hadn't been in that experience before. Like I've always been around families where it's a husband wife duo and um, there can be some, still some more like often, I want to be careful saying this, but there's a lot of farm families where the women provide all the food and they bring meals to the field and they do all the book work, which are like critical jobs, like super important, but um, just depends what you want to do. And I don't know that those want to be my main roles always on the farm. I kind of want a management role as well. So it was really good to meet all these female farmers along the way that were like kicking butt. <laughs> Yeah, I it's beautiful and and the relationships that you form and the people you meet on the way are sometimes some of the the strongest guiding beacons um in in terms of learning and and just the informal conversations that you can have uh around a dinner table or while taking the cows out or whatever it happens to be um those conversations can really have a really strong impact and um whether it's formal mentorship or informal mentorship it's really neat to be around people who have a little bit more life experience than you do. And you can really, um, if you just pick their brain a little bit, you can take home so many gems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I made like fantastic connections, people that I've reached out to them already and to ask them questions. Um, and just the, the network of connections I've made has been wonderful. Yeah, I think it's it's just such a cool journey that you've been on and you've seen so much of this country. I think you said you did six provinces? Yeah, I did because I started at home in Ontario and then from Quebec, I went all the way out to the West Coast like driving. So I went through um, all those provinces and saw, met people and everyone. So, oh, except Manitoba, but <laughs> sorry, Manitoba. <laughs> You'll go back there one day. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, now, the farming was kind of a central piece to your gap year, um, but were, were you able to do other things? Did you do any reading or um, any music that you were able to balance the farming stuff with? Yeah, um, I, I actually carted my electric piano all the way across the country with me so I could play my piano and practice and um, but yeah, I learned things outside of agriculture too. I thought a lot about history as I was, especially in the prairies, like I thought a lot about how settlement had affected that. And like, like you know, I'd go, I would went for hikes and I was thinking about like, imagine when this used to be bison out here and the lifestyles that surrounded that. And um, so yeah, I did, it wasn't only agriculture and 
Um, and I, since I like hiking, I tried to hike everywhere. So see some lots of nature. Like it really didn't bug me that because of COVID, like stereotypical maybe attractions weren't open, but like that didn't bother me because I could just go see nature everywhere. It was just beautiful seeing the way the landscape changes as you go west. Yeah, the the prairie skies really do take your breath away um, on a nice blue day. Um, it's it's absolutely remarkable, um, and and the mountains, and we just are so lucky to live in such an incredible, incredibly diverse and beautiful country. Um, there's just so much to see within our own borders and within the natural environment as well. So I think you hit the 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 nail right on the head with that one. Yeah. <laughs> And I really like that you had other things going on because some people get so tunnel vision with their gap year, um, especially if they're, they're looking at like career exploration. They think everything needs to fit under, under one goal um, or under one theme. And really, you've got 24 hours a day to fill. Um, and you, you got to find other things to supplement your, your core goal with in order to stay engaged and in order to flex different muscles and try different things. So the fact that you had um, this history component and this art component and this nature outdoors and physical activity component, um, along with the agriculture, it really helps to round out your experience so that you are, are living your, your fullest gap year. Yeah, that was, that was, you're right. That was really important because Saskatchewan, I was working crazy hours there. We worked like 13 hour days. And it never rained, so we never really had a day off. So <laughs> when I ended up leaving Saskatchewan, um, I made my way over to relatives in British Columbia. And when I was with them, I just took like a three-week vacation before I started another job. And I just, yeah, I, I like made, I, I like to do art. So I made some watercolors of um, things I'd seen and, and just took time to hang out with my family and um and yeah I did actually play a lot of piano but that was important to just take a take a rest there okay Abby so this is the question on everybody's mind uh you took a gap year during a global pandemic uh which is no small feat and it looks like those who are planning a gap year for this year might have uh uh, if not the full-fledged pandemic, at least the aftermath of a pandemic. So how did taking a gap year in, uh, during a global pandemic, how did that, how did that affect your, your whole year? Yeah, it's, it was really interesting. It, it didn't start off affecting it too much. I think because I started in the summer when things were a little better, like it didn't feel so crazy to, <laughs> to move to a different province and, um, things were still fairly normal for me in the summer. Um, and overall, like agriculture, because a lot of my work is outside or if I'm driving equipment, it's me on my own. Like it wasn't too hard to, to get these jobs. Like agriculture goes no matter what, everybody needs to eat. So I think my specific industry helped make it still a really good experience. Um, but really like it didn't take away too much my experience because even as I yeah like I said as I went west like all the things I wanted to see were outside I could still tour people's farms because I could be outside um and it was it created the opportunity for me to actually do this because like it was almost like a sign when I when I that job fell through that I was like this is my chance to to go and do this and I'm not sure if that would have mm -hmm. happened um if I wasn't under these circumstances. It, in the end, as I went, as I started a job in BC, um, I, I realized that like overall, my priorities, my family, and I did decide to change my gap year because when I started the job in BC, it was supposed to be um, from December until March of 2022, or 2021. And uh, I had signed up for that, but then like during December, um, I started the job, it was good, but like things, it was tough to be watching the news and see how, how things were just worsening in Ontario and be that far away and worry about my family. So that was when I decided that I would, I've had a pretty good adventure the past few months that I would come home. So I did um, end up returning home, but overall, despite pandemic, it's been really good experience. I love that 
you were able to, again, adjust your plan. And that is one of the powers of a gap year. And when I'm talking to families around gap year specific in pandemic time, one of the the pros for taking a gap year, if you're making your pro and con list, is that you're in control of what you're doing. So as the pandemic changes, as the virus levels change, as the restrictions change, whether they're getting tighter or looser, you can adjust the course of the activities that you're doing. Um, what, whereas if you were in somebody else's program, if you were in a university program or a college program, you have to do what they tell you to do. If they tell you to go online, you've got to go online. You can't go to another province or you can't um, change your activities to be outside. Um, when you're on a gap year, you have control of that. And so you can find the things that feel right for you that are still moving you towards your goals or putting your priorities in the right order. Um, you have control, whereas sometimes in other situations, you're at the beck and call of what those other people are deciding are their priorities. Um, so I love that perspective of the fact that you your gap year wasn't ruined by it. Number one, it, it made the opportunity possible, and then you were able to adjust it based on the pandemic and do what felt right to you. And and uh, because you had made that space to be a little bit quieter, you knew what you what you had to do or what you needed felt you needed to do. And coming home was the right fit for you at that time. And and there is nothing wrong with you or nothing wrong with that. That is. Uh, that is part of your gap year story that you're going to be able to to carry forward and tell your great 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 grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is our first gap year podcast with a uh, with a farm twist, uh, which I think <laughs> is so cool because everybody's got their own gap year story. And I'm so grateful, Abby, that you were able to join me on the podcast and share your story. Uh, but before I let you go, do you have any last words of advice or pieces of wisdom, um, no matter how big or small, that you'd like to share with those considering a gap year or those on a gap year right now? Yeah, um, I would say on your gap year, like to try as many things as you can. I think in one of your podcasts, somebody had a quote about like trying, trying everything you can so that you know if you want more of it on your plate or like if you don't ever want it on your plate again. And that was kind of what I tried to do and just check off a bunch of things that I'd been wondering about and see if they were for me or if not. And, uh, and then also never turn down a farm tour or whatever industry you're in, never turn down a tour because you always learn something, probably meet somebody and they'll probably point you in a good direction. Wise words, wise words. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. And if folks wanted to follow along with the rest of your gap year journey and, uh, and see how all of this learning translates into what your next steps in life are, uh, how can they follow along with you? Um, they could go to my Instagram, uh, which is Abby the Chicken Tender. <laughs> clever, very clever. <Thank> you. <laughs> and we will post that in the show notes for anybody who wants to follow along there. Uh, Abby, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast and sharing your story. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks for having me. So over the course of that interview, you heard Abby talk a couple of times about our chat that we had. Uh, I offer free 30-minute consultations. And what that is, is you book a time with me and we sit down and we talk about what are your goals and I help connect you with the resources that you need to make the decisions to have a really purposeful gap year. So whether you're deciding if a gap year is right for you or not, or if you've committed to a gap year and you're looking to make the most of it, this is a well worth your time. So it's a free 30 minute conversation with myself and getting all of the gap year expertise and resources and the Rolodex that's in my head. You get access to that for free. So jump onto our website cangap.ca slash call and book your free 30 minutes. I would love to chat with you and support you on your journey. 